Hi Kathy, I'm Tabang Lezalo. Uh, can you please help me with the picture of the eye? Come up onto my screen here. Now, wow, all right. You are going to get a drawing, uh, at least a, uh, um, a question on the human eye and probably the human ear, definitely in an exam, so make sure you listen. All right, the diagram below represents a human eye when a person is looking at an object six meters away. Okay, people, just remember that if it is um, six meters plus, then you're looking at long distance. Okay, and if it is closer than six meters, then you're starting to look at a short distance. So... How do your teachers know when you are not paying attention in class? Okay, because teachers are miraculously inspired with the sixth sense? No, they just have to look at your eyes because you get that far away look in your eyes. Then they know ha, this little person is not paying attention. Why? Because when you are chilled, when you are relaxed, when your eyes are relaxed, they set for distant vision. When you're sleeping, they set for distant vision. Your eyes have to work hard to see closer than six meters. Looking further than six meters, the eyes relax, all the muscles are chilled. Okay, so looking close is like sitting doing sit-ups for hours. And that is why, please hear me now, when you study, do not study for longer than 20 to 30 minutes at a time. Because you need to give your eyes a break. And if you do that, your eyes will work properly. But if you don't, and you try and study for three, four, five hours on a trot, your poor little ciliary muscles are going to be so tired that your eyes go into focus, out of focus, into focus, out of focus, and you don't even realize it. And then you think, why can't I get this in my head? I keep doing this and I can't get it into my head because your eyes are not focusing. So give your eyes a break. It would be like doing a, sitting in a sit-up position for 20, 30, 40 minutes and you're expecting these tiny little eye muscles to do that. So don't study for more than 20 to 30 minutes at a time. Okay, and then don't go and watch TV or look at your cell phones when you take a break. Now they say object A is placed three meters away and object B is placed eight meters away. So let's see our diagram. What's the first rule? We, we label. So we know object A is three meters away from this eye and object B is eight meters away. So this is far, far, far away. This is long distance. And here we're starting to look at short distance vision, okay, or near vision. If we look at P, P points to this little round thing there. So P is the ciliary muscle. And that's the little one I'm telling you that has to sit in a, almost like sitting in a tummy crunch sit-up position for as long as you are focusing on anything closer than six meters. And Q here is your suspensory ligament. Or ligaments, because the ligaments run all the way around the eye. Okay, what are they going to be asking us here? First, it says, name the following on the retina of the eye. Okay, the area that is responsible for forming the clearest image is the yellow spot. Or, if you really want to be fancy, you can call it the fovea centralis. Okay, and let me just show you on the diagram. People, you must learn your labels of your eye. Okay, here's your yellow spot. That's the fovea centralis. Okay, that's where everything is focused. You have very few rod cells and mainly cone cells in this area. That's your focal point. Okay, this area here, and I'm going to color it in, is called your blind spot. And there are no receptors here. Okay, photoreceptors. Why? Because this is where the optic nerve exits the eye. So it would be like putting your bed in front of a door. You don't do that. So your optic nerve is the door. It's the door where your nerves actually, the impulses travel out of the eye 
and goes past the chiasma and into the occipital lobe at the back of your head. That's also why you get a headache when you focus on something that's very, very close to you. Okay. Let's see our next one. It says the photoreceptors that are stimulated in low light intensity. Guys and girls, it's the rod cells. Okay, they will tell you, uh, um, they help you to see in the dark. Okay, as opposed, and I'm going to do this in a bracket like this, the cone cells, and the cone cells are for color. Now look how easy it is to remember this. C for cone and C for color. And your rod cells are for low light intensity. That's why you can't see color in the dark. You see in black and white, actually, and that's because of the rod cells. So name the disorder that results from the inability of the eye to focus on object A. So we go back to our diagram. What is it called when the eye can focus on B, which is further than six meters, but it can't focus on an object that is three meters away. That means that that person is what we will call, now there are different terms, so it depends on what your textbook and your teacher have said, but they all correct. So you've got far-sighted, you can say that you are long-sighted, Or you can call it hyperopia or hypermeteropia. Take your pick. They are all correct. Now, here's something interesting. Okay. When you are far-sighted, it means that your eyeball is too round. Okay. So it means that when you look at something that is near, um, the image falls short of the, the retina. Okay, now, when you get old like me, you know my glasses, and what do I have to do? I have to put my glasses on so I can see here. I can read street signs that are far away, but I can't see here. And you know what that's from? It's from the lens that isn't as elastic as it should be as we get older. It's also because of abusing your eyes on closed screens all the time. So for all of us that look at computer screens and cell phone screens all the time, you're putting strain on your eyes and eventually they say, I've had enough. And then those ciliary muscles, they have to contract so that you can see near. And they, they start like all other muscles when people get old, they start to say, listen, I can't do 50 sit-ups or 100 or 200 or 600 sit-ups anymore. I can only do a little bit and they don't, they don't contract enough. Right, so that is all the issues that you get when you are far-sighted. The image falls on the other side of the retina. Name the type of lens that should be used to correct this disorder. In other words, for far-sightedness, you're going to need a convex lens. Okay, and a convex lens is actually a converging lens. All right, and what a converging lens does is we have refraction. Okay, so it's refraction of the light. So, or in, let me put increased refraction of light rays. And therefore, you end up shortening the focal length. And that's important, guys. Okay, you end up lengthening, uh, shortening that focal length. Because when you are far-sighted, what happens is if this is the eyeball, you end up with um, the image falling here. So you need to bring it forward so that it falls there. You shorten the focal length. All right, and then it says explain the role of P and Q to ensure a clear image when a person focuses from B to A. Now I'm running out of time here at a rapid rate, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna explain it to you, showing you here. First thing that happens is that the ciliary muscles will contract, okay? Let me get another color. They will contract. When the ciliary muscle contracts, it pulls the ciliary body forward. So towards the lens, then that's P. 
then Q, the suspensory ligaments, now slacken. Okay, they slacken. So they go brr, brr, like that because there's no, there's no tension on them. So they slacken because there is less tension. And you, tension with an S, tension. And that allows the lens to become rounder. And when the lens is rounder and more convex, what happens? We therefore have more refraction of light and the focal point is now shortened so that you can now see that focal point falls on the back of the retina. Okay.